Good morning and welcome to the Bowtie Gardens. This is uh, a sunny, beautiful, glorious day. Temperature is about 70 degrees right now. We're supposed to get up to the mid 70s here on the panhandle of Florida in Destin, right here in down, well, yeah, not quite downtown, but uh, here in the residential areas in Destin. But uh, I wanted to talk to you briefly today about a possible problem in the garden. And that's invasive species that you actually want to grow. Now, First off, what's a weed? A weed is just a plant you don't want in a place you don't really want it to be. It can be anything. A tomato plant can be a weed if it's growing in the wrong place. So not really talking about weeds, but we are talking about a couple of crops that I enjoy growing that are considered highly invasive. If uh, you watch any of the monthly garden tours that I do, you'll be very familiar with all the mint that I grow on the property to help keep away uh, squirrels and it works it really works I think I could probably experience a lot more devastation than I do because of the squirrels in fact just over here in the neighbors yesterday I was watching with a friend we were watching five or six squirrels playing with the idea of coming over to my strawberry patch which is not very well guarded right now so it was a kind of watch and see what they were planning on doing I, I'm sure they're they're uh, they're probably hitting my strawberries now. There's not as many coming up anymore. I haven't been harvesting as often and uh, certainly not nearly as much. So that's to be expected. Um, but yeah, the other invasive species and the one I wanna talk about today is sunchokes. Now sunchokes, uh, there's a whole other series on what I, on growing, harvesting and cooking up sunchokes that we did a number of months ago. This is the following season after that the following growing season and we have sunchokes coming up and I'm going to bring you down here and show you uh, what's in the artichoke patch here because uh, it's if, if you don't take care of it it could be a problem hi I'm Bowtie Dave So this here is my artichoke patch, green globe artichokes. I have uh, five of them growing here, but this is where the sunchokes grew last year, right in this area, right here. And if you look at my um, garden tours from last year, in fact, I'll see if I can link in the cards up in the upper uh, left corner, uh, upper right corner, sorry, um, to those if, if you're on a device that gets cards. But uh, the, uh, the, the sunchokes were beautiful and we love them i love them i love cooking them up they're a, i'm diabetic and they're a wonderful potato substitute for diabetics uh, but we've taken them out and you notice there's some pots over here in the ground and one not on the ground and but that right there is a sun choke there's sun chokes in each of these three pots already and if you look down here close you can see right next to this green globe artichoke there's a sun choke growing in fact, we're gonna come to the end of this video, we're gonna dig that very sunchoke up and I'll show you the tuber that's at the base of it that it's growing from. There's also, if I step in here a little bit closer, there's another one right there. That is a sunchoke volunteering from last year's tubers, which, you know, I tried to get them as much as I could. I know I didn't. You're gonna miss these things. There's, there's dozens, if not hundreds, of these tubers growing all through. They, they root out and Put little tubers everywhere and they spread like crazy so when you're dealing with a species like this of plant that you really want but uh, you need to keep them in control from spreading like that a really good idea is to take a large pot well in this case a very large pot you can do mint in this now the thing about mint though is it will if it's a small pot it can actually climb out the bottom and root, roots will go over and spread outside and um, I like to say someone plants uh, mint in the ground in five years, it'll be five miles away still growing. So uh, it's not that bad, but it's pretty prolific. But what I'm going to do here for this video is just showing you here. This, this is a big pot, same size as that one, but you can see that one's right down inside there. 
But if I come around my tripod here, you'll notice there is an irrigation head back here. In fact, a very important irrigation head. This irrigation head takes care of this whole section of the yard. So I don't want to block it. Obviously, that would be a problem. But I'm going to bury this pot down in the ground. I have some soil to supplement it with. In fact, uh, this is a mix of some rich sand, a few shovelfuls of rich sand. There are some of our horse bedding compost, plus some of the, my own compost that I made last year. And uh, this is going to be used to supplement what we get out of here. Now, what I'm going to end up doing is as we're digging the hole out. Now, when I did it before, I just put the sand inside the pot and mixed the pot as I went. Let me tell you something, that was a stupid idea because then you have to move an 800 pound pot back into a hole and it didn't go too well. <laughs> Needless to say. <laughs> but I don't wanna do that, obviously. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this in it. It's got a little bit in it. You can see here, there's a little bit of dirt in it and I'm, I'll probably end up dumping that out. And uh, over here, in fact, there was an aloe in it and I put it in over here and see if we can grow an aloe in this, this uh, front pollinator bed. These aloe, they're giant, they're huge, and they've had these wonderful blooms and it's, they're great for pollinators. So I thought, hmm, that might be an interesting change in texture for this pollinator garden. So yeah, got me a few tools. I got a sharpshooter or a drain shovel back here. I've got an edger uh, to, to cut around the pot. I've got a uh, post hole digger is actually really convenient. I know we're not dealing digging a post hole, but that is really makes digging any kind of a deep hole with a flat bottom easy. And then of course a regular shovel, which we may or may not use. But uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna set up here and, and uh, get moving and try to get this pot put in the ground. It shouldn't take but a few minutes. And I'm gonna just do some time lapse on the tripod here. So you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. And you know, this is really my own journal of the things that are going on in the garden when I do things. And uh, this is just another step in the garden, something I noticed today that really needed to get done. And so here we are, my ADD brain says, let's go. And uh, I'm a going. So I got all my tools together. I'm gonna go get a tarp out of the, out of the garage to put the sand on and we'll uh, get this thing buried in. And once we do that, we will dig up those, we will dig up those uh, sun chokes that are over in that bed together and I'll bring you in close and we'll do that regular speed because I really want you to see what this, these uh, sunchoke tubers look like as they're coming out of the ground. I've taken several out and you can see the ones that are growing. Everything growing here is stuff that came out of that bed already. Some of them were already up. In fact, those two bigger ones were already up and I very carefully pulled them up and they've been growing for a month now. And uh, these floppy ones down here where that, that straight one right there, um, that straight one, is one that was here. The one, all the ones that are floppy are ones I already did this morning, but I need another pot because I don't want to let those over there get too big. They will grow 12 feet tall, so, or more. And I don't want them to block out the green globe artichokes like that. So yeah, here we go.
and there you go. The bed is filled up. Uh, you saw me mixing soils in there. Uh, actually, well, let me just show you this. I found some real life going on. Can you see that worm right there? Big old worm. Lots of big old fat worms all throughout the, the soil in there. He will be happy there. But uh, he's a little cool from the morning, but he's warming up in the sun now. He'll crawl back into that nice, rich, moist soil. But uh, anyway, so um, when I was digging the hole, I actually took the top little layer of sand and, and, and compost and set it aside because it is full of dollarweed. Uh, dollarweed is an, actually an aquatic plant that grows wild here in Florida. Uh, it's not limited to water. It's not even limited to near water. I, I know I saw over at Roots and Refuge, um, Will um, was, uh, was cleaning out the pond. He was cleaning out some of the, the, the dollar weed out of the pond. I forgot what they called it, but he's using it for, for green mulch. I thought, oh my gosh, this stuff grows in dirt just as well as it grows in the water. But, you know, their land may be, their temperatures get colder, so I imagine it probably kills off a lot easier. I know uh, the dollar we did not like our freezing temperatures we had over Christmas. But uh, anyway, so I set that top few inches aside because it's full of dollar weed. And then the next little bit I put over here to where I used. Um, and that's actually uh, sand, our white sand, but it had a lot of matter, uh, organic material in it. And it was great. Uh, had it was rich soil so it was rich uh, sand is pretty much what we're growing in here but uh, so I set that aside and then I dumped the pot out and then you saw me burying the pot in had to shape it the hole a little bit there but uh, and then as I was adding it in now this orange stuff we have this orange sand over here and the orange sand is what's you start hitting about two three four feet down uh, further closer you get to the beach the deeper it is but here we're seven blocks from the beach and you hit that about uh, two feet down. And uh, so uh, that's a uh, substrate we have here. The white sand is the, is the sand that washes down the river from the mountains. Uh, I can't remember what stone it is, but uh, it's, it's what makes our beaches really white. But uh, anyway, so I set that aside and I filled the bottom about five or six inches of the pot with that because it actually will offer some drainage down there. And then, um, I put, I just put, I mixed two shovels of the compost out of the, out of the wheelbarrow, and then a shovel of this, a shovel of that, and, and just kind of mixed it all in. Now, this thing you saw me go get, um, this is not a required tool. A friend of mine gave this to me. She was moving from a house to a condo and she no longer needed uh, yard, yard utensils. So she, she gave me this cause she knew I might find a use for it. But uh, anyway, um, I use that to just kind of get it incorporated together and uh, it's really ready. I, th I think that soil is very ready. So let's uh, take a look at these um, sun chokes and at what they, what they look like as I'm digging them up. Cause it's kind of pretty, pretty kind of, <laughs> uh, it's kind of pretty cool, I think. So I got my Corona Hori Hori here, which is a really good tool for in the garden. Um, and there's no sponsorship. I just heard some other YouTubers talk about these and thought that's useful. And so sure enough, it is. Um, you can use it to carefully dig around. And basically what I wanna do is I wanna dig around this root and you can see that's already lifting up. And if I reach under here, and this is really loose soil because I've been working it for over a year now, but somewhere right here, there we go. You will see a small tuber right there. See that? That's the, that is all it takes to grow a 17 foot. Uh, actually, this one may be one of the shorter ones. I may be wrong about this one, judging by its location. Uh, but oh, now, okay, so there, this broke off. So that's another tuber and it's ready to, to grow its own, uh, its own plant. So now these may be shorter ones. I'm gonna put them in this top pot, but if they grow shorter, I'm gonna hunt them down and pull them out. Um, let's set that aside for, for a moment and it can sit there for a few minutes while we do the other one. So this one's all surrounded by this dollar weed. Uh, I'm going to carefully remove some of that, some of those leaves. I 
Okay, so now this is this I'm suspecting is probably one of the larger ones. Ooh, that came up good. That came up good. So I definitely got the tuber. Oh, or did I? Oh, looky there. Looky, looky, looky. There's tubers right there. That's a thing of beauty. That means more plants. And there's a the tuber that uh, this came up from. So we're going to plant both of these in that new pot and the other one we just got up and any others that I get, especially from this end of the bed where the the 12 foot plants were located. They were kind of over in this end. Um, but you can uh, subscribe to Bowtie Life and stay up with our garden tours and see the progress here. This channel is really just a record of my progress in the garden. I'm going to put this uh, smaller one. I'm saying this because this is also my personal journal. I'll be able to reference back to this. Remember which one of these is which. But I'm going to plant that pretty much the same way that it was in the ground. Just, uh, you know, six feet over there. And I'm going to actually plant that little tiny piece also. See what happens there. Now these, I know, I am almost positive, are, long, are tall ones. And I'm going to put these much closer to the middle of this bed. i put this one here. Get those roots all the way down there because those roots will go deep. And that's why this pot is so deep. Here's, a, here's another one I'm going to plant over here, closer to the irrigation head. But uh, yeah, this stuff that was in that pot, I'm pretty sure it is probably mostly old chicken compost. Uh, so that's good rich stuff. It's been there for a number of years, uh, I'm, I'm sure. But there you go, another bed in. Oh, there's that worm we saw earlier. He still, oh, he's, he's crawling in now. There he goes. All right. So there we go. Of course, the last thing was to water it in and uh, we have an attempt to control a potentially invasive species uh, in the garden that, uh, that's a good producer. So I was hoping to have another pot and when I saw those new ones growing up in the garden itself, I got very excited because I thought that's, that's my last ones. So um, anyway, uh, again, my name is Bowtie Dave and uh, we talk mostly about gardening, sometimes about life, and we do a monthly garden tour to measure the progress of everything that's happening out here, whether it's nature growing or me working. <laughs> Gotta prove I've actually done some work somewhere along the way. But uh, um, we, uh, we have our, in fact, uh, yeah, garden tours should be out for April by the time this comes out. and. Uh, you'll actually see we're, we're about to record that uh, this here is, is this video is coming out after the garden tours oh well a little out of order sometimes it takes me a while to get the uh, editing done on some of these videos so it's it's a bit of work uh, at certain times especially the end of the month when I'm trying to do all the, the garden tours so anyway um, hope maybe this gave you an idea something to do in your garden with an invasive species and how to control it, whether it's mint or asparagus or uh, sunchokes or something that you just enjoy but can be a little invasive. We have a lot of stuff like that. So uh, I'm noticing my yarrow. You have to see the front and side garden tour for April to see the yarrow, but the yarrow is, uh, is starting to spread over here too, which I'm actually very happy about because uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the yarrow grow. And I have a feeling this year we're going to see a lot of those more perennial stuff. Uh, they will be back year after year growing. So anyway, uh, I think I already said please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, you come back and watch more of our videos. Thank you so much. We appreciate all subscribers. We appreciate all views. And uh, especially appreciate if you found this entertaining, educational, or informational. Uh, click the thumbs up on this video and uh, share it on your social media. It's, uh, it, it all is free things that you can do to help grow the channel. And uh, it's all very appreciated. So, um, 
If you have any questions about this, please uh, let me know in the comments below, or if you have any comments about what you've controlled in, in those uh, invasive species in your garden that you like to grow. Uh, I love mint for a number of reasons. Number one, it does help control the squirrels a bit. Uh, we just like mint tea. Uh, I, we like, I like sticking a bunch of mint in water, uh, all kinds of stuff you can do, but mint is mad invasive. So anyway, uh, I have a lot to do today. We're, uh, in fact, if you might've seen the video where the stuff in the yard is the furniture that I've been working on. Uh, I gotta get some of that uh, finished processing and uh, uh, a few other things done today. So gotta go pick up and install a grill. Uh, I'm a handyman in case you didn't know. Uh, also a web developer, but uh, anyway, um, yeah. There you go. Have a blessed day.